Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Jason Marzak, and I'm the director of the Atlantic Council's Adrian R. Slot America Center. Uh, thank you for joining us for our, one of our signature rapid reaction calls uh, today on the steel and aluminum tariffs uh, restored by the United States on Brazil and Argentina, uh, which all of you know was just announced yesterday morning uh, by President Trump. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Thiago de Aragao, uh, Shunko Rojas, and Renata Vargas Amaral, who all uh, accepted the invitation on, of course, short notice to share some of their thoughts and insights on this current and evolving issue. Uh, I also like to thank our Global Business and Economics Program that's partnering with us on today's call. This call is also part of the broader portfolio of the work of the center, uh, which aims to dig deep into commercial relations across the hemisphere in their future. Uh, this includes, among other things, a sideline event that we just held uh, last October. Uh, in Sao Paulo on the sidelines of the Brazil Investment Forum in collaboration with Apex Brazil. Uh, President Trump's announcement took most of us, I think all of us, by surprise, including, frankly, the leaders of both countries when he announced the move that he would be effective immediately uh, um, restoring tariffs uh, on his way to the NATO conference. Uh, the President uh, did this move with claims that Brazil and Argentina are devaluing their currencies uh, and affecting U.S. exports. He also suggested that these imposed these tariffs would benefit uh, U.S. farmers uh, who have been adversely affected, of course, by the U.S.-China uh, uh, trade spat. Uh, this is not the first time, of course, that the administration uh, has deployed tariffs uh, against uh, partners, uh, and this also, of course, comes amid uh, continuing trade tensions with, with, with China. Uh, earlier this year, President Trump instated the 25% tariff on, on, steel, on steel and 10% on aluminum on national security grounds, but he later excluded close partners, and Argentina and Brazil were among them. Uh, both economies are meaningful trade partners for the United States. Uh, the U.S. economy, for example, is the second largest market uh, for Brazilian exports. In 2018, Brazil exported uh, just over $30 billion to the U.S., with iron and steel accounting uh, for just over $3 billion. This represents about 10% of Brazilian exports to the U.S. and 11% of all the steel that the U.S. imports. Uh, likewise, in 2018, our Argentine exports to the U.S. Uh, totaled just shy of $5 billion. Uh, this makes the U.S. the second largest market for Argentine goods, and among, among that, aluminum accounted for uh, just under half a billion dollars in exports, uh, which is about roughly about 9% of exports to the United States. Uh, also important to note, the U.S. does hold a trade surplus with both uh, economies. Uh, the, present, the present announcement also comes at a time in which uh, both Argentina and Brazil continue to face headwinds. Uh, uh, both of these major partners uh, are, are seeing um, uh, growth forecasts that are, are below what, it, what, what, what would be desired in 2019. Uh, the IMF predicts that Brazil will grow about 0.9%, while Argentina's economy will face a, 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 a growth, negative growth rate of about 3.1%. So uh, I'm putting that all out there to help to frame our conversation, of course, uh, as well. Uh, as mentioned briefly, China also very much uh, figures into this, this conversation. We'll be talking about China uh, during the call, course of this call as well. Uh, we're going to be unpacking it. It's a complex issue. We're going to unpack it over the course of the next uh, 25 minutes. Uh, let me briefly inter introduce the, uh, the, the speakers. Uh, first is Thiago de Ariao. Thiago is a director for strategy at ARCO Advice and also editor of the Casino Logico podcast, a podcast that is part of my uh, library, and I encourage everybody else to, to listen to it as well. Uh, Shunko Rojas is also joining us. Uh, Shunko previously served as Undersecretary for International Trade uh, of Argentina and is also a partner at KIPA, if I pronounced that correctly, Shunko. Uh, we're also thrilled to have Renata Vargas Amaral with us. She's the founder of Women Inside Trade. She's also a senior international advisor for BMG Consultores Asociados and also director of the summer program on U.S. international trade law and policy at American University. We'll leave a few minutes for questions at the end. If you have a question, feel free to, uh, uh, if you're online, use the chat box. Uh, on your website to ask your question. If you're calling in via phone, you can ask your question via Twitter using uh, 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 the hashtag ACTrade and, and sending that tweet to uh, at ACLATM. Uh, let me start off with you, Renata. Um, help us to drill down a little bit further on uh, the importance of steel and aluminum for the trade basket between Brazil and the United States and, and how and what the effects uh, of the President's announcement 
uh, could potentially be for Brazil? Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the invitation to join this important call. Uh, well, uh, everybody was took by surprise, as you mentioned in the beginning of your, of your talk, Jason. Uh, Brazil, uh, as we know, is a major U.S. trade partner in Latin America uh, and the third largest U.S. surplus in the world. So I brought here some numbers uh, on the overall bilateral trade and number and numbers specifically regarding to the steel and aluminum industry to show you how important this industry is to Brazil, the exports to Brazil to the U.S., and how complementary are specifically the steel industry uh, between Brazil and the U.S. So U.S. goods and service trade with uh, Brazil totaled an estimated uh, $130 billion in 2018. Uh, the U.S. Mm -hmm. goods and services trade surplus with Brazil was uh, 20, around $28, $29 billion uh, in 2018 and over uh, two and $270 billion in the last decade. The most important products U.S. imports from Brazil are, are manufactured products in general and iron, steel, and oil, and airplanes. And the most important products Brazil imports from the U.S. are fuels, manufactured products in general, chemical products, plastic, uh, and articles thereof. So 40% of the Brazilian steel are destined to the U.S. overall, while 26% of the aluminum imports are destined to the U.S. market. Um, Brazil uh, was the second largest supplier of steel to the U.S. in 2018, uh, representing 14% of U.S. steel imports. 52% uh, uh, of the uh, United States imports of semi-finished steel came from Brazil in 2018, which makes the country the largest supplier of semi-finished steel to the U.S. That's the most important product. Uh, basket of products on steel that I exported from Brazil to the U.S. and it's extremely important to the U.S. industry itself. 89% uh, of the Brazilian steel exports to the U.S. are semi-finished products used as inputs for America's steel industry. So uh, only 11%, um, um, together with this, only 11% of Brazilian exports to the U.S. are finished steel. Uh, it represents less than 2% of U.S. imports of finished steel products. Um, also, I think it's so important so we're, just... We're, we're to, not, yeah. Renata, I was going to say, so, so this is, I think one, among all those really important statistics, one important point is that Brazil is the largest supplier of like semi-finished steel exactly. to the United States, right? So, so when you actually dig a little bit deeper but behind some of these numbers, you see the importance of the Brazil steel industry frankly, probably frankly to the United States and also the importance of the United States to the, to the Brazil uh, uh, steel industry. Um, I want to, Shunka, move, move on to your uh, assessment on, on Argentina and how you see uh, this move uh, affecting uh, bilateral trade between the two countries. Uh, thank you, Jason. A pleasure to be with you. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, so Argentina exported to the U.S. about 700 million uh, dollars in steel and aluminum last year. Uh, the U.S. is one of the most important um, export markets for Argentine steel and aluminum. At the same time, it's also important to know that um, in total, uh, this 700 million is about 1% of total exports of Argentina to, to, the, wo to the world. So uh, it has a very important direct impact that affects particularly the two largest uh, steel and aluminum companies in Argentina, but it doesn't uh, deeply affect the uh, trade balance of Argentina. Thank, thank you, thank you, Shuka. And Tiago, a question for you. How do you see uh, uh, the, the signaling that this message sends to U.S. investors as we look at um, uh, the growth potential in Argentina and Brazil uh, um, uh, the U.S. Uh, economies, U.S. investment, I think, is critical for that growth. So what, what's the signal that this uh, uh, announcement could be sending to U.S. In investors? Or, or is it, or is it, or are investors really seeing this as just limited to, to just, just the products we're talking about? Hi. Uh, 
Thank you for the invitation. Well, the investors, particularly the U.S. investors, they are more used with Trump and the way that Trump works than investors in Argentina and Brazil. So while it, uh, in Brazil and Argentina, the yesterday's tweet caught everyone by surprise, um, the investors that I talk uh, and I speak with in New York Obviously, they were also surprised because they didn't know uh, that this was coming their way, but not very surprised because they understand the modus operandi of President Trump. I don't think that this affects particularly other than those that invest directly in these sectors. But generally, uh, it's, it's a further blow, it's a further difficulty barrier that is placed on, on the mindset of these investors when they look at the global map and find places to to allocate their investments and look at brazil and argentina uh, they have certain difficulties in uh, organizing themselves in order to protect against this sort of decisions so i think part of the major question that was made is how far can political friendship or diplomatic approximation with the us can take you uh, is this something mm -hmm. that can protect a country against decisions like that? Or is this something that uh, is nominal, it's used more for uh, electoral purposes, but doesn't protect any country at all in terms of uh, having a special relationship with the U.S.? So perhaps... Well, John, I, I, yeah. I, I want to pick up on that point, right? So uh, um, uh, President Bolsonaro yesterday... Um, uh, he, he, had a, he had a tough day. People were, were asking what, what the results have been thus far of the, of the strong political relationship with the United States, uh, given the announcement of, of, the, of the tariffs and him, uh, uh, of course, not, not knowing about this announcement in advance. So what are the, and that's a question both for you and for Renata, and then I'll ask you a similar question, Shunko, with regard to Argentina. But what are the political implications for President Bolsonaro, who has put so much political capital into his relationship with the United States, and, and what is the pathway forward uh, after yesterday's announcement? Well, basically, he's being criticized for having miscalculated the depth of that relationship. Uh, and this miscalculation uh, emerged based on the emotion that was developed in the, in the beginning of the relationship with Trump. I think it was too much emotion uh, in this approximation and less pragmatism that, than was expected. Uh, and Bolsonaro, he has demonstrated that he really gets involved with the personal relationship with the leaders that he deals with, either positively or negatively. So his trip mm -hmm. to China completely shifted his behavior towards he uh, extremely friendly for, to the Chinese president. And right now, it's likely that uh, the blow from the decision, from the tweet from Trump, might cool down some of his views towards the American president that perhaps could lead Brazil to have a more pragmatic calculation of how, these man how to manage these relations. Renato, let me let you jump in there as well on your, your thoughts on, on what, what the implications are uh, for President Bolsonaro. I completely agree with, uh, with Thiago. There is too much emotion involved in this relationship. I believe that uh, we that are based here in DC, we have been skeptical about all the announcements that President Bolsonaro has been ma making over the year uh, with regard to, uh, to his relationship with, uh, with Trump. Uh, there were several signs during the last months that Trump is very pragmatic in his relationships. It's not about friendship or uh, liking or emotional feelings. Uh, for example, the fresh bovine meat market, we didn't open yet. Uh, the letter of support to Argentina and Romania uh, to the accession of the OECD, although it was expected somehow because Argentina and Romania started their process before Brazil, it was kind of disappointing to the Brazilian government not to see the uh, Brazil listed as uh, in the letter sent by Mike Pompeo to, to the organization. So mm -hmm. I believe, and I totally agree with Tiago that from now on, I, I believe this is what is really a strong sign that Trump uh, is, is more interested in, in, in worried about his electoral campaign here in the U.S. next year. 
and the U.S. farmers are a very important uh, base, electoral base for him. So he's do if, if, anything he he needs to do to convince that he's still protecting the U.S. Uh, industry and agribusiness. And Brazil and, and Argentina are now in a very delicate position, in my opinion. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you, Thiago Renata. And I think you know as well. Of course, this this comes when there's been so much euphoria about the potential of of a investment treaty of building blocks for a broader uh, a, a, a trade agreement between between the U.S. and, and Brazil. Shunko, this announcement also, of course, comes. Uh, uh, eight days ahead of uh, the new uh, administration taking office, uh, of, of President Elect Alberto Fernandez taking office in Argentina. Um, uh, 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 this has uh, caught both the, the, the current uh, government as well as the incoming government by, by surprise. Uh, there is, um, uh, the, there is a, a significant um, uh, headwind space in the Argentine economy, and now, as you, as you detailed, this is uh, adding to that. What are the what are the implications of this announcement with regard to domestic events in, in Argentina? And again, especially coming uh, one week uh, before uh, before the the inauguration of the new president. Yeah. So I think that um, first of all, bef before having any type of political reaction, I think it's important to, to to really understand what's going on and what are the implications of the of President Trump tweet. Uh, first of all, I think it's uh, important that. It's actually, it's not about Argentina or Brazil. It's not about steel and aluminum. Uh, it's not about currency manipulation in Argentina and Brazil. It's a message for the farmers. It's a message of President Trump saying, I'm fighting for you against uh, China. Uh, and definitely, it's, it, this has to be read as part of the presidential campaign that President Trump is getting into very soon. So far, there has no, there has been no executive order or a formal resolution that translates this tweet into something concrete. So, before having any reaction, I think it would be important for uh, the Argentine government to to see what actually comes out of this this tweet. Uh, second of all, um, as you said, President Macri is leaving office in right in just one week. It's a it's a government that is in transition. Uh, it doesn't have the political clout or, or anything to, to offer in exchange if we think of this uh, announcement in a transactional way. There's nothing that the Argentine government can, can put on the table to, to, to deal with this in a substantive or effective way. On the other hand, uh, Alberto Fernandez, of course, this is not good for Alberto Fernandez. He, he, he's going to take office in, in just one week and he will have this on the table. But at the same time, uh, the concerns of, of Fernandez are way beyond these uh, specific tariffs on steel and aluminum. Uh, he has his focus is on, on building a strong political coalition, building the new government, and in the relationship with the United States, of course, the priority number one is uh, that restructuring. And if you compare the, the size of the the, 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 the the problem or the implications, the volumes that are discussed. Uh, the, the tariffs on steel and aluminum are negligible compared to the, the problem of concerns related to the debt infrastructure. So, so Shuka, you, you think? Um, I mean, there there is there is a possibility because, as you say, this has been this is a tweet. We haven't seen any kind of the formal mechanisms take take place. There is a, a, a possibility that something uh, uh, could potentially uh, uh, still be be worked on. I, mean, I think back to the uh, announcement of uh, tariffs on, on Mexico and. And, and right. early early right. June, and those 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 tariffs, of course, uh, uh, there, there was there was a, 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 a they they basically set the stage for the yeah. U.S. and Mexico to work together on mechanisms to reduce migration. So potentially, this could be the result of of uh, of yesterday's tweet. Yeah, exactly. And and also, I think it's important to take into account that President Trump took the the decision to accept Argentina and Brazil from uh, imposing the tariffs. And still an aluminum based on the uh, section 232 and the considerations were related to national security. And now the trip relate, uh, mentions refers to uh, currency uh, manipulation, which has nothing to do with national security. And it's going to be hard for the administration, the US administration, to justify the imposition of tariffs to Argentina and Brazil, given that the national security considerations have not changed in the past few months. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's going to be uh, that easy. 
I want to I want to pivot uh, uh, and ask a question. I'll direct this first to you, Tiago, on on China. Um, the uh, looking at looking at the the the, uh, the exports from both Brazil and Argentina to China uh, thus far in 2019, uh, it, it's it's pretty remarkable. The increase in um, farm farm and soy uh, 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 soy exports, soybeans uh, import to China from Brazil. Brazil has shipped. Uh, over 25 billion in, 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 in soybean and pork uh, uh, to China, uh, uh, along with other farm products, which is about 10 times the value of steel and iron products sold to the United States. And then, likewise, in the case of Argentina, soybean shipments to China uh, more, were more than the triple the value of, of the uh, aluminum and iron pipe exports to the United States. And, and those soybean shipments to China, uh, this was this is 2017 numbers, but they were about 2.5 billion. So. Uh, the so of course uh, so China um, has has a, could have has has a role here uh, in and and especially as U.S. farmers have been uh, hurt by uh, the U.S. trade conflict with China uh, that has opened up opportunities for Argentine and Brazilian farmers. Uh, Giava, how does how do you see China factoring into yesterday's uh, announcement? Look. Uh the Brazil-China relation had changed uh, considerably from a little bit um, more than a year ago until now. Uh, when we had during the campaign Bolsonaro attacking China, saying that China was trying to, to buy Brazil and all those things, uh, the Chinese approach was more strategic in understanding, basically out of necessity, they increased the imports, the agricultural imports from Brazil due to the, to the war, the commercial war with the United States. But also in the field of politics and diplomacy, they started to build uh, an approach towards Brazil that started to soften up Bolsonaro. So when we had the fires, uh, the height of the crisis of the fires in the Amazon, the only country that stepped up uh, defending Brazil was China. And lately, when we had the auction for the oil rig uh, that was uh, not successful because none of the 13 American and European companies participated, the only foreign company that made a bid was a Chinese company. And that was complemented by the trip that Bolsonaro did to China, which ended very well for the two parts. So when we had the episode like yesterday, uh, with Trump, what we can expect in the upcoming days is a position from China in order to occupy the vacuum. And China has been occupying the vacuum in the relationships, in the mistakes or the faulty lines produced in the mistakes between Brazil and the U.S., uh, Argentina and the U.S., and even other countries with the U.S., in order to increase their support and increase their approach to those countries. So you see, you see Thiago as this being uh, potentially an opportunity uh, for China uh, to, with, with the, um, I think probably the increased uh, skepticism uh, and the concerns about the direction in which the commercial relationship might, might go, that, that China could really take advantage of this moment to further increase its, its, its uh, commercial investment relations? I, I, I do. I believe that China will take advantage of that. Uh, diplomacy is an extremely complex environment. When you have players that are not fully knowledgeable about diplomacy, the country that delivers something faster tends to have the advantage. So the diplomatic game between Brazil and the U.S. led Brazil to believe that they would have immediate benefits from the U.S. And as Renata well put, Brazil didn't receive these Im immediate benefits from the U.S., while China, with their different modus operandi, they started to deliver something immediate to Brazil. And also they will demand immediate actions from Brazil, such as uh, Brazil allowing Huawei to participate in the 5G auction in Brazil at the end of next year. So when diplomacy is not fully understood by one of the players, the, the player that does understand pays immediately for the support they want, and they actually benefit from that. And that's what China is doing with Brazil. I'll say, uh, 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 Tiago, the, the Sino Logico podcast I mentioned at the outset is the, uh, it's a Portuguese language podcast on Brazil, China, 
uh, relations. So thanks, Jim. I want to go to a question we have on the, over the chat box and get a few questions. You feel free to use the chat box on the uh, on the uh, uh, Zoom application, or uh, you send your question via Twitter uh, using the hashtag uh, AC Trade and send that to at AC uh, The question here is under USMCA. Uh, Canada and Mexico have mechanisms to protect themselves uh, from arbitrary 232 tariffs. Uh, should Brazil and any other country seek similar letters in future trade negotiations uh, with the United States? Um, maybe, uh, Renata, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn that question to you, but, but uh, others feel free to jump in. I believe that one one question that has been uh, in the air since yesterday is uh, whether uh, Brazil would counter retaliate the U.S. exports uh, if this is the way to go, like the EU has been doing. Turkey, Russia, India, they all did uh, uh, some sort of counter retaliation. Uh, that's definitely not the way to go. I don't believe also that the Brazilian government will go uh, through that direction. Uh, simply because, uh, for example, we had the CEO forum meeting here in DC last week. There was no hint that this was coming, uh, the tariffs. Uh, the, Brazil, the Brazilian government and Brazilian private sector are seeking actually uh, a trade agreement, uh, an ample trade agreement with the U.S. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the short future. Uh, that's not, uh, I don't believe the U.S. government is in the same path and the, uh, there is no red light for the trade agreement, but uh, the U.S. government has been trying to push for a more uh, uh, past uh, uh, conversation with Brazil starting first uh, for trade facilitation agreement and then talking about all the other issues. No, but uh, the short answer is no, Brazil has no mechanism like Canada and Mexico has uh, um, uh, within the USMCA uh, to to deal with Section 332 uh, measures, uh, I believe that Brazil will try, and it has been trying since yesterday. The technical teams of both governments have have been talking, from Minister of Economy, Department of Commerce, USTR here trying to to because everybody was took by surprise. Also here in the US, not only in Brazil. Uh, so Brazil will definitely try to negotiate. Uh, there is no interest in counter retaliating the U.S. and no, there is no mechanism uh, like the like Canada and Mexico have within the USMCA. And let me just thank you, Renata and, and Shunka. We have two minutes. Let me let me ask a similar question to you, which is, uh, what type of uh, uh, assuming these these the tariffs do stick, what 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 type of tools or instruments? Yeah. Um, might uh, Buenos Aires have to potentially yeah. persuade the U.S. administration uh, to reverse course? Yeah, so I, I agree with Renata, uh, retaliation is not an option. I think that there are opportunities for having a bilateral uh, discussion or negotiation. Of course, you also have the option of going to the WTO and challenge this measure there, but again, not, we don't have even a formal resolution by the U.S. administration, so that's still not a, a, an issue. Um, I don't think going to the WTO is also a viable, viable option considering the, the deadlock and, and crisis in which the WTO is today. Um, also, you, you cannot take into account uh, a company could uh, demand a product-specific exclusion to the uh, US Department of Commerce. And also, it could be an option to file a claim before the US Court of International Trade. Uh, this court has already uh, issued a decision against the administration regarding a, a case uh, of imports from Turkey, of steel and aluminum from Turkey, and, and it was a decision made against the administration because the administration didn't follow up the, the requirements required by the Section 232. So I think there are different options. I would go for the bilateral uh, discussion with uh, not make, and again, this is just one of the items of, or issues that Argentina has in the bilateral economic relationship with the United States. And of course, uh, Argentina is in a deep recession, it's in a deep crisis, it's, it doesn't have the leverage to, to impose the terms of the negotiation. Well, I want to, we, we got another question over Twitter uh, as you were talking, Shunko, but uh, 
we always like to start on time and, and end on time, and it's, and it's 10 o'clock here in Washington now. So uh, I encourage everyone to continue the conversation uh, uh, over Twitter. And I want to thank uh, uh, you, Renata, Tiago, and Shunko for uh, um, uh, your, your insight, your analysis, and for joining this call uh, with, um, with, with, with such a rapid response. Uh, here at the Agent Arts Latin America Center, we will continue to uh, not only follow these develops, uh, but think proactively about tools and mechanisms that could be uh, utilized to uh, continue to uh, push for strong relations, uh, both between the U.S. and Argentina and Brazil, uh, as well as uh, but, uh, among the countries them themselves as we look into uh, uh, 2020. Uh, thank you all for, uh, for joining us and uh, look forward to the next time. But